Now, a women's health ambassador is to be appointed in England as part of government plans to tackle decades of gender inequality within the health service. The vision for women's health has been drawn up following government research that found at least eight in ten women have felt that they're not being listened to by healthcare professionals and that services for specialities or conditions that only affect women are a lower priority than others. Well, more than 110,000 responses were received between March and June of this year in England. Almost 100,000 of which were from individuals. There were 400 written responses from organisations. Well, we can speak now to Maria Caulfield, who is Minister for Women's Health. Good morning. Good morning. Now, it's a great headline, isn't it, to say there's a a women's health ambassador after doing a a government consultation where so many women have felt felt that they don't, aren't listened to. People just don't listen to them within the health service. But what will it actually do to tackle those health inequalities? Well, you know, we held a consultation earlier um, in the year and, over, as you say, over 100,000 women um, responded. And this uh, strategy is really just highlighting the concerns that they have raised themselves. And, you know, it's all through a stage of a woman's life, whether it's um, early on, uh, whether, you know, we've heard from women, we've had backbench debates on things like endometriosis, where it can take eight years to get a diagnosis, right through to women who are facing the menopause, who often go back, Uh, for repeated appointments and are told that they're feeling a little bit down, they may be depressed. And actually what's going on is uh, the menopause and there's, you know, things like HRT that can really help with that. So this is about um, making sure that those um, conversations are heard and that this is just the outline of our vision of, of these priority areas that women themselves have identified that then in the spring we'll put the meat on the bone to identify how we're going to um, uh, kind of improve the experience for women throughout their life in terms of their health experience. Were you surprised that so many women are having such a bad experience with health professionals? Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, I probably was. I mean, particularly if you listen to the um, HRT debate that we had in the House of Commons in October, how many women have been, uh, you know, who thought that they were either depressed or just not coping with life? And so many hundreds of women uh, contacted me after that debate to say they thought the menopause was just hot flushes and night sweats and didn't realise their aching bones, the fact they couldn't sleep at night fact that they were depressed was actually all related to a biological process that they were going through and it was such a relief and uh, we don't talk enough about women's health issues I know it sometimes feels like we do but um, you know I was really astonished at how many women felt you know a light bulb moment when we were talking about these issues in parliament. So how will a women's health ambassador help somebody who, like you say, goes to their GP and wants to get help with the menopause or looking for a diagnosis of endometriosis, for example. How are those two things going to actually make a difference? So I think it's about keeping it high on the the priority. So it is about raising these issues so women um, can identify, you know, with endometriosis, for example, it often takes 10 appointments to even get a a diagnosis of endometriosis. And over a period of eight years, that is the average for most women, they're, you know, prime years for women in terms of their fertility. And and, and so this has a huge impact on on their, their lives, their families' lives. And so having an ambassador will not just keep that, that those issues high on the profile, but it'd be working with, you know, whether it's GPs, other healthcare professionals, women organisations, to drive forward the, the objectives that we, we will launch in the spring um, around tackling these issues so that women at all ages of their life um, span will be able to um, get help and support. So whether it is with, um, you know, um, Uh, fertility issues, whether it's things like baby loss, whether it's osteoporosis when they're older in life, whether it's dementia, you know, it's really important that we we flag to women that these are important stages of your life and there's help and uh, and support there available. Much of this is already in nice guidance and it's about raising the profile and giving women confidence to come forward to ask for help. If they don't get help the first time, to come forward and ask again. But that makes it sound like you're you're putting the, the onus on women. Shouldn't it be a case that there needs to be a culture change, whether it's with GPs or nurses or whoever it is you go to see in the NHS? And that is going to take time, isn't it, to change a culture so that people listen to women more. And I'm presuming as well there's going to need to be additional training, which once again will take time. 
Yeah, absolutely. It is about changing uh, the culture. Um, and it's, you know, if you this is part of the whole process. If you look at the menopause task force that we're setting up, which is in response to the HRD debate that we had in October, you know, that is really going to set out not just in terms of um, changes that we need in, in terms of, you know, improving education awareness amongst uh, GPs, but also about the workplace. You know, it's about saying to employers, women go through different stages of their life and they need help and support to get through that, whether that's um, when they, they lose a baby through miscarriage or whether that's when they're going through the menopause uh, when they're, they're um, older. So this is about a culture change, but it's also giving the women confidence that if they're not getting that response, whether it's from a healthcare professional or an employer, that actually um, that that's not, uh, you know, that there, there is help and support out there. So this very much, this is the first ever uh, women's health strategy in England. And I think I'm really excited that we're pushing this agenda forward for women. Now, while we have you on as a, as a health minister, I, I want to ask you about the pandemic and about the government's response to it. We know that there have been further restrictions announced in, in Scotland and Wales, which will come in after Christmas. As yet, nothing for England. And people are going to be preparing to see families. Businesses need to plan. We all need to plan. It's the time of year when, when people are going to be travelling. Businesses are going to be spending lots of money trying to, to get stock in, get food in. People need to know if there are going to be more restrictions brought in. Why hasn't the government told us? Well, the PM in England that there's... So that there's no restrictions up until Christmas. And obviously we're reviewing the, the data that's coming in almost on an hourly basis. And it's we know that um, Omicron is uh, much more transmissible, that you know it's doubling every two days. But what we're looking at at the moment, the crucial data is around the severity factor and how that impacts on hospitalisations and death. So that is being looked at constantly at the moment. And I'm sure the Prime Minister and the Cabinet will be making a, a decision soon. But it's really important that when we make that decision, it's the right decision uh, because there's pros and cons in, in terms of uh, weighing up uh, restrictions uh, against the changes that are already in place. So the data is being constantly looked at and um, you know that that's changing um, uh, very frequently. But further restrictions will be required uh, to some extent, won't they? Because, we, you know, over 100,000 cases yesterday, we know that hospital emissions are going up. Scotland and Wales have said further restrictions are required. Further restrictions are going to come in in England, aren't they? Well, you know, I think the important thing is to look at the, the, the changes we've made already. They are making a difference. They are um, slowing things down. And our big message really to everyone, the biggest difference we're seeing is around the boost of vaccination, which is, you know, helping uh, people stay out of a hospital. So our big message, our big plea to people, you know, we had over a million uh, vaccines given yesterday, is to get vaccinated. That is the biggest help that they can uh, do for themselves, but also for their family and loved ones and communities so that we can get through this uh, period as quickly as possible. Thank you for coming on Women's Out today. Grateful for your time uh, speaking there to the Women's Health Minister, Maria Caulfield.